up on UMass Sports Insider. It's our basketball season preview, and we take a look at the Minutemen squad, which brings big expectations into the most anticipated season in years. And you'll meet the mighty floor general for UMass, a point guard with an incredible motor who's generating national attention entering the season. Plus, we take you back to last March, when a thrilling run helped build lots of momentum for the Minutemen entering the upcoming campaign. Reaching the highest of heights, UMass Sports Insider, next. Now, this is the UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola. Reaching the final four of the NIT was a great accomplishment, one that has UMass's fan base fired up for the start of the 2012-13 men's hoop season. With almost all of the key figures from last year's squad back, the upcoming season could be one to remember. Hi and welcome to UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host, Josh Maurer, and it's our men's basketball season preview edition. Coming up, Coach Kellogg will wear a microphone for us during a practice. And let's start with a look at this year's team, one that UMass hopes will be able to get back into the NCAA tournament, and many feel that with the people on the roster, they have the horses to do so. Here's Cody Cruchel. Coming off a 15-15 and 15 season two years ago, the Minutemen entered last year pick 12th in the then 14-team Atlantic 10. But after 25 wins and a magical run that culminated with a loss to Stanford in the NIT Final Four, the bar has been raised for the maroon and white. Now in his fifth season at the helm of his alma mater, UMass head coach Derek Kellogg has the program back where he wants it. I thought one of the biggest things that um, playing well kind of on the, on the tail end of the season last year, it brought credence to the style of I've implemented here at UMass, which is a fast-paced game of basketball on both ends of the floor. You know, high-pressure defense both in the full court and the half court, and then high-pressure offense where we're coming at teams for 40 minutes. How, much play? how fast oh, How fast do we get it in and get it up and down the floor? You guys got yeah. me? Brotherhood on three, let's go. One, two, three, four. We're not new to it anymore, so we know what Coach wants us to do on the offensive end, and uh, everything just comes second nature to us now, running the floor hard, getting into the press, and and making teams uncomfortable. It's all just second nature to us now. Like most teams, the Minutemen's catalyst is their point guard, 5'9", Chaz Williams. In his first season in Amherst, the Hofstra transfer led the A-10 in assists while pacing his team in scoring with nearly 17 points per game. Now a junior, the Brooklyn native feels more comfortable running the UMass offense. I felt a lot confident coming into this year, and I still feel a lot confident, you know, because my team looked forward to me. Um, they look at me to be a leader and, you know, to be the, the guy on the floor, you know, doing everything they need me to do. So, you know, it was a big confidence boost and, you know, it got my teammates behind me. The center position is the wild card. UMass's only significant loss to graduation was big man Sean Carter, the team's leading rebounder from a season ago. Sophomore Caddy Lalane, who was sidelined for the final 23 games last year by a foot injury, will look to step into that role. Caddy's coming on uh, somewhat slowly, a little slower than I anticipated, but you know we all know what he's capable of doing when he gets back in basketball shape and really starts getting a feel for the game again. So I'm excited to watch his progression as the season kind of unfolds and that um, we clearly have not hit a ceiling at that position. And the Minutemen will also feature a speed element. Raphael Putney, one of seven upperclassmen on the roster, will spearhead UMass's fast-paced attack on defense. Well, last year that was a good thing for me, my stand on being in the game as, as much as I can. But now this year, I think my team really needs me this year. So this year, I, I've been working on my conditioning. I got better my conditioning, my endurance, my stamina. Especially I'm playing at the top of the press this year a lot more, you know, starting right off of it. So it takes a lot more energy of me, so now I think I, I worked on a lot this summer, you know, talking about endurance and stuff. Last year, the Minutemen breezed through their non-conference schedule, winning 12 of their first 15 games. This season, they'll be challenged right out of the gate before beginning a grueling A-10 slate, which features newcomers Butler and Virginia Commonwealth. One of the greatest things is, you know, we're getting on national television on our first game against Harvard, an NCAA tournament team who finished in the top 30 in the RPI last year, so I think that's a great opportunity for us to come out of the gates against a high-level opponent. Um, Jumpstart us to a big-time uh, non-conference schedule and an even bigger conference schedule with uh, the additions of uh, a few teams nobody's heard about in BC and Butler. Um, you know, two Final Four teams in the last couple years and um, really a big-time conference with potentially seven, eight, and maybe even nine top 50 RPI games within the league. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Cody Cruchel. 
Thank you, Cody. Well, this year's UMass team certainly revolves around its dynamic point guard who made a big national name for himself with a great performance last March. And now Chaz Williams is going to have to live up to the tightened expectations. Here's Hugh Zeitlin. At just 5 feet 9 inches tall, Chaz Williams may seem small, but his height does not correlate to his play on the hardwood. God blessed me with an ability to be able to jump at such small height, and um, you know, it's just, it's, it wows me sometimes, you know, then I just want to keep going out there and trying it, you know, once I was found out I was able to jump so high, you know, it was like, why not try to get rebound? Why not try to play above the rim? On the court, he's our main general, he, he has the ball in the hand a lot more, so, you know, on the court, sometimes DK calls a play, we won't actually listen to him, we listen to Chad, you know, he knows, he sees it on the court. I thought he had a, a terrific end of the season last year, his last eight to ten games, he did some things that... Um, not a lot of point guards around the country can do. And now we just need him to put together a whole season. I wish that's what, uh, you know, college basketball was like every game. That whole run in March was, wow, you know, we were just running off adrenaline and uh, just wanted to play. We were so enthused about playing and continue to play. The native New Yorker began his college career close to home, suiting up for Hofstra. But after transferring to UMass in 2010, Williams had to spend a season off the court. He says that was a year that opened up his eyes. You know, it just helped me mature as a player. Um, I got to see things a lot different, um, you know, from playing a year and just sitting out a year. And, um, you, know, you know, I just got to see uh, basketball from a different aspect. And Williams continued to grow as a player last year as a redshirt sophomore, recording his first career double-double very early in the year. Now entering his junior season, his coach says there's still plenty to work on. Not have any off games, not take days off in practice where, you know, not that he did that a ton, but there was a couple times where, you know, maybe he got tired and didn't give the greatest of effort. So I think uh, if Chaz can put together a type of season like he did the last half or ten games of last year, you're going to see a, uh, a special, special point guard in a UMass uniform. You always have to expect more from yourself than others have expectations of you. So, you know, I just always take that into consideration and just think, okay, if they expect this from me, well, then I must need to do extra if I expect more from myself. As the preseason draws to a close, expectations are high for the Minutemen. Based on the way Williams handles the rock, those around him say there's a reason to be optimistic. He really brings out the best of me playing with him. You know, he's a solid point guard. He works hard. Every, he doesn't get tired. He does a lot of things. Doesn't get tired on the court. The greatest thing about Chaz is his ability to get other guys to play energized, to be an energy giver. I mean, coming to practice, you always know he's going to compete and play. Um, just his overall demeanor when he's around the, the practice floor of the team is what you want out of a point guard. He plays to win in every drill we do and every time we step on the floor. You know, just hearing people say my name and my name being mentioned in some different things, you know, it was good for me, but it also made me come in the gym and want to work that much more harder because now I know it's a lot more people looking at me. It's not a couple hundred, it's, it's a couple more hundred. So, you know, I'm just in the gym working on my game. Thank you, Hugh. Good luck to Chaz and company as they get their season started. And the practices for this campaign actually began in mid-October. During one of those, we put a microphone on head coach Derek Kellogg to see what the team has been working on in preparation for the year. Let's send it down to DK. We call this X's and O's. In today's drill, this is one of my favorites. This is the circle trap drill. And really what it does, it helps build our press. And you'll see when, you, when the drill gets going here that we're really working on attacking the, the trap. We're really coming at the ball with two guys, trying to keep them in the trap. And we do what we call as elevate. The two guys that aren't in a trap are going to elevate, looking for steals, looking for deflections, and looking for tips. This is the basic building blocks of our press defense, and this is one of my favorite drills that we do every day during practice, the circle trap drill. All right, listen to me. We're going circle trap. You guys got that? Just one time through real quick. Get it right, and then we're going. Uh, Put back up a little bit. You're behind the offensive. We're going to go offense to defense, defense off. So actually, you'll be behind the defense. You guys are behind the maroon, then they're off, and then uh, blacks on offense. You guys got that? Maroon on D. Ready? Start! Good, good, good. Up, 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 up. Good. Pass. Pass. Good. Go, 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 go. Good, good, good. Keep minute, keep minute, keep minute. Good. Pass. Anywhere, anywhere. Go, 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 go. Good, 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 good. Pass. Pass. Skip it, skip it. Go, go. Pass! Back to your spots! Back to your spots! Ready? Start! I want to hear it! I want to hear it! Start! Good! Get him! Get him! Good! 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 Go! 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 Beat it down! Good! Good! Be strong with it! Good! 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 Pat! Come on! Try it! Good! Good job! Ball! Throw it! Ball! 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 Good! Good! Ready? Start! Good! 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 Good, 
Good, good. Oh, uh, good. Bring it in, hustle, hustle in, hustle in. Good, there we go, there we go, there we go. Good, good, good. All right, here we go. Thank you, Coach. As always, we hope you learned something. Our men's basketball season preview will continue later in the show, but when we come back, we'll turn our attention to some other UMass sports and look at some highlights of some big victories from the last couple of weeks. Oh, boy, keep it right here. Hi, I'm Steve DeMarco. Wherever your destination, Premier is your solution. Our reputation as an industry leader is built on service, safety, and the guaranteed best price. At Premier, safety stands above all else. Our fleet is serviced on site by our certified technicians. Premier will customize your travel needs all within your budget, and we can even accommodate your travel requirements worldwide. With Premier Bus Lines, you'll be in good hands when safely aboard one of our comfortable brand new 2012 high capacity buses. Premier, an extraordinary experience, guaranteed. Your wedding with award-winning UMass Catering. We can host, design, and plan your big event from full breakfast, lunches, to elegant wedding receptions and dinners. UMass Catering can host events in one of our ballrooms at Overlook Campus, Tented Outdoors, or our own Renaissance House. The possibilities are endless. Let the culinary team at UMass Catering bring creative menus and exceptional service to your wedding day. Special rates for members of the UMass family and alumni. You're watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back. It's time for us to take a look at some big wins for some UMass teams in recent weeks. And we start with hockey, where new head coach John Micheletto's first Hockey East win was certainly a memorable one. It came against undefeated New Hampshire right here at the Mullins Center. Let's take a look. It's instant replay. Herrera and Sherry went to the faceoff. Goes back to Allen at the point. Down in front, Seth score! Overtime winner for Darren Rowe! UMass 2, UNH 1! The UMass field hockey team hosted the Atlantic 10 tournament on the first weekend of November and took on top seed Richmond in the championship game at Garber Field. The underdog men and women took it to the Spiders thanks to a day to remember from senior Tondo Zono. Heidemann inserts. Here's Zono. Goal. Patrick Tondo Zono. 5 nothing UMass. And the University of Massachusetts middle women are the 2012 Atlantic 10 field hockey champions. Then days later, the men and women hosted Ryder in the NCAA play-in game, and with a berth into the big tournament on the line, UMass won its 10th straight contest. Stop by Sakalis, they pass. Young, shot, tipped off at the defender, hit the ball, rebound, score! The men and women have won the game. They're headed to the NCAA tournament. Today as we preview the start of the men's basketball season, UMass men and women hoops is also getting underway and recently Coach Dolly took her squad out to a walk that supports a very important cause. We take a look back now as UMass Catering presents Serving the Community. In September, the Alzheimer's Association holds their Walk to End Alzheimer's event in Holyoke. And for the second year, the entire UMass women's basketball team came out to show their support. Um, we're out here walking in Olia Holyoke for an Alzheimer's event, helping everybody out, helping out. Miss Katie, um, she's more the most dear and near to our hearts for this event. We're here to support, help support Katie Anois, our secretary, and her family. Um, Katie's dad has Alzheimer's, so um, we're 
last two years we've come out uh, and just walk to show our support. Uh, Katie had been talking about our first year, you know, coming to the walk and then uh, ended up coach kind of offered and the girls all thought it was a good idea. My family has been doing this event for about four years now. My dad was diagnosed with uh, early Alzheimer's about, probably about ten years ago. This is the fourth year my family's been doing it. And um, the team really started to get involved when they found out that my dad was diagnosed. My whole family walks um, for my dad. Our team's name is Wally's Warriors. And um, there's probably about 20 of us that walk. And then with the team, there's probably about 40, so it's great. Alzheimer's has taken a prominent notice in college athletics after coaching legend Pat Summit was diagnosed in 2011. You know, this event is becoming a little bit more near to me with Pat Summit and all that she's going through. So, you know, being from Tennessee, it is kind of a nice to also do this for her and also from the state. Oh, it's very important, you know, letting everybody know that we care. And also, it's just something nice to do, you know, making sure we understand that Although we are students, although we're athletes, we also need to go out and uh, make sure that we're giving back to everyone around us. Any support that you can lend, either coming to a walk, making a donation, um, just uh, supporting caregivers and their families would be great. Coach Dolly's squad supporting a very important cause, and we wish them the best of luck as their season gets underway here in November. It's time for us to break. Don't go far. When we come back, we'll relive the memorable month of March for UMass Hoops. All the big comebacks and dramatic finishes for the A-10 and NIT runs. Keep us plugged in. It's a rare Sunday night Hockey East game as the Minutemen welcome UMass Lowell. 6.9 is a breakthrough. 6.9 is a physics lesson. 6.9 is the outer limit. 6.9 is an explosion. Point nine is ounces, and that makes this the lightest ever. The UMass Hotel and Conference Center was voted the best hotel in Amherst. Situated on the beautiful University of Massachusetts campus, the UMass Hotel and Conference Center is where you stay to be in the heart of it all. With 116 contemporary guest rooms, free wireless internet, room service, 36 meeting rooms, free parking, and in walking distance to downtown Amherst, the UMass Hotel and Conference Center has it all. Hi, I'm Steve DeMarco. Wherever your destination, Premier is your solution. Our reputation as an industry leader is built on service, safety, and the guaranteed best price. At Premier, safety stands above all else. Our fleet is serviced on site by our certified technicians. Premier will customize your travel needs all within your budget, and we can even accommodate your travel requirements worldwide. Premier Corporate has your business needs covered. Rest assured, your team and clients will arrive safely, comfortably, and always on time. Premier, an extraordinary experience, guaranteed. You're watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back. It's our UMass men's basketball season to preview. And as we talked about earlier, much of the positive momentum the squad is taking into this season began last March with great deep runs in the Atlantic 10 tournament and then the NIT. Here's a great look back. UMass's run in March actually began on the final day in February when the squad took on A-10 regular season champion Temple. And after erasing a 10-point deficit in the final two minutes of regulation, the Minutemen found themselves tied with 30 seconds to go in overtime. And the Owls come away with it. They outlet the Wyatt. He's got to break away. He lays it up and in. 16 seconds left. Temple. Williams starts in, picks up his dribble, goes to Morgan, his runner along the baseline, no good, the tip is up, no good, it's loose, Tepo wins! Even though it was a loss, it seemed to build momentum for UMass, and after a senior day victory over rival Rhode Island, the Minutemen hosted Duquesne in the first round of the A-10 tournament, a game that turned into a shootout. Williams cut in, and he lays it in! That was Javon's ninth assist. This will be only the second A-10 win for UMass in 10 seasons. And what a thriller. And it's off to Atlantic City. 
Just over a week after the overtime loss in Philly, UMass got another shot at Temple, this time in the quarterfinals. A big run to start the second half gave the Minutemen the lead, and some big plays late helped finish the upset. Step on the shot, how about that? He told us that before the game. Anybody that's in this tournament has a chance of winning it all. One second left, and that is it. For the second straight year, the number one seed has been eliminated from the Atlantic 10 tournament. The next afternoon in the semis, UMass fell behind by 16 to Andrew Nicholson and St. Bonaventure, but mounted a furious charge in the closing minutes and had a chance to reach the A-10 finals. A chance to win it with a three for UMass. Putney way downtown. No, hard off the back of the rim. The loss meant UMass would be relegated to the NIT, an opportunity Coach Kellogg implored his team to take full advantage of. We've come too far, you got me? We yeah. traveled all the way down from Amherst down to Starkville, Mississippi. They come out here as a group and a, and a brotherhood to play. You guys got that? Yeah. The first round matchup at Mississippi State went to double overtime with each team trading blows, but at the end it was too much Chaz Williams for the Bulldogs. He's going to take it for three. Got it. Just a gutty little kid, man. Wow. UMass is going to advance to round two of the NIT, and boy, they do it in some kind of fashion. You don't see a lot of 101 to 96 ball games, do you? Up next for the Minutemen, another road game, this time against number one seed in the region, Seton Hall. And after trailing late, UMass once again came up with some timely shots. Another game in their collegiate careers. Deep, deep shot by Vincent. 21-7 run over the last six minutes, making the difference. On to the quarterfinals at Drexel. And with Madison Square Garden in sight, UMass fell behind the Dragons by 17 in the second half, only to respond big one more time. Massanet loses it. A chance for UMass on the break to take the lead. Morgan, pull up three. Knocks it down. A minute man have come from 17 down to take the lead. Back tap to Fouch out at midcourt. He has to launch one. No good. UMass pulls off the comeback. The memorable comeback sent the Minutemen to the NIT semis in New York, where a week later they took on Stanford. UMass hung tough with the Cardinal for most of the contest. Oh, punctuation. Oh, it's up. Good job. Here comes Chaz Williams. Oh, the jam. No, only a freshman. Williams could kick out and Riley knocks it down. UMass on top. The Minutemen's loss ended a month to remember, one the team hopes to build off of at the start of the 2012-13 season. Man, those are some great moments. I'm Mike Wegson, UMass football quarterback. When we come back, we're going to learn about some of my teammates' most embarrassing moments. The UMass license plate says it all. You don't have to be a sports star. Any UMass fan can be a star with a UMass license plate. Ride with UMass pride. Order your license plate at UMassAlumni.com. All proceeds benefit UMass. Book your wedding with award-winning UMass Catering. We can host, design, and plan your big event from full breakfasts, lunches, to elegant wedding receptions and dinners. UMass Catering can host events in one of our ballrooms at Overlook Campus, tented outdoors, or our own Renaissance house. The possibilities are endless. Let the culinary team at UMass Catering bring creative menus and exceptional service to your wedding day. Special rates for members of the UMass family and alumni. You're watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider, and it's time for our weekly lighter side. Well, even the best of athletes sometimes have moments that they aren't too proud of, some things that happen on a court or a field that they wouldn't exactly want to relive. So we asked some UMass athletes this week, what's the most embarrassing moment of your athletics career? Let's check it out. I was up to bat, and I went to bunt, and the ball went and hit me uh, down low. And I went down, and I just started crying. <laughs> I got rim block. I'm um, on a fast break. And for those who don't know what that means, please describe. I actually went up for a dunk, one-handed dunk, and the rim stopped me from making my dunk. I mean, it, 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 I fell. 
back in high school, I was uh, I went to Avon Oak Farms. Uh, I played track there. The triple jumper or something. I think he got hurt or something. They're just like, you know, might go in there, but I hadn't done it, you know, forever. I didn't even know how to really do it. I played soccer my whole life, so in high school it was we went into overtime with a big rival. Me and my best friend played up top together and she passed me the ball and I was like could picture myself scoring and like the winning goal and having this huge moment and I totally whipped and fell to the ground. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I was playing junior in playoffs, and it was early advertised, so our rink was packed. And they're introducing me, and I'm running onto the ice. As I'm running out the gate, my jersey gets caught in the door, rips, and then I fall, sliding out on the ice. One time, we was at a tournament in Pittsburgh, and during the middle of playing, I had to use the bathroom like really bad. I had like I think I ate a McDonald's uh, snack wrap or so. <laughs> in hockey. Uh, probably when I was like 18, I was skating down the wing and my shell came undone and I tripped on it and I kept on tripping and I kept on tripping and I tried to get off the ice and I tripped again. What did your teammates say? It was, a, it was a good laugh for a while in the locker room after the game, I'll tell you that much. And so then I go up to the line and I run and I go do triple jump and I kind of, you know, mistook my step and then the line was, you know, like right there and I probably jumped maybe. An inch, you know. We just stood there laughing at each other. There's nothing else I could do. In the middle of the game, you just fell on your butt. Yeah, pretty much. And like everyone, you know, in high school, everyone in the stands was like going crazy, like making fun of me. What was the crowd's reaction like? Was it laughter? Was it cheering? Was it booing? It was laughter and cheering. So I mean, I get really embarrassed and my face went pitch red. But you know, you gotta play it off to the crowd. Like it's not a big deal. You gotta tell us what happened. Uh, I told my coach, like, I need to sub. Once I seen the uh, whistle blue for the dead ball, I just, like, ran straight to the back. <laughs> I didn't even go to the bench. So. And, and, I mean, the fans were just laughing, and my parents were just hiding their faces. So, yeah, that was, pre that was pretty embarrassing, too. What happens if you get rim blocked and then you lose? Ah, uh, you know, you probably here for another two months. You know, you got to work on your hops. You got to do extra calf raises. You don't, you don't want to do that. And then the guy goes down and actually measured it. It was like one inch or like one point some inches or something crazy like that and everybody was like <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did your teammates say after the game oh jenna she was like just dying she just stood there laughing so hard and like i don't know why she's just on the floor here's my question did you have to get a new uniform for the game yeah they had a backup jersey oh, for they me did. god yeah so i mean you ever admitted this publicly before <laughs> no no i guess not Hey, it happens to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> what was your teammates' reaction? Uh, I was, uh, I mean, I got joked about a lot. I mean, lots of jokes about me for like the last like three weeks after that. At what point do you realize you're not going to make it? I mean, I'm thinking I'm going to go up. My legs feel good and, you know, the crowd is behind me. And you do one of those dunks, man, and it, it, it don't go as, according to plan. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. So it, it ain't a good feeling, man. For like 10 seconds, there's probably like 200 people out there, too, you know, just like watching me. It was, it was really embarrassing, dude. <laughs> you destroyed a uniform. Yeah, I mean, whatever. They didn't make you pay for it, did they? Yeah, their money, their money, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> And we thank everybody for sharing those embarrassing moments. Well, that's it for our show. We thank you so much for tuning in. Our next new episode comes right after Thanksgiving, the weekend of November 23rd and 24th. Until then, this is Josh Maurer saying thanks so much for watching. The UMass Sports Insider, brought to you by Coca-Cola, Adidas, UMass Catering, the UMass Alumni Association, and umassathletics.com.